President Trump unleashing threats against North Korea in front of the United Nations this past week, mockingly calling the nation's young leader Rocket Man and announcing new financial sanctions, which essentially force companies and individuals to choose to do business with the U.S. or the North. The United States has great strength and patience, but if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. The North Korea delegation walked out just before he spoke, and the North Korean leader, well, he had his own harsh words, calling President Trump mentally deranged and said his U.N. speech was unprecedented, rude nonsense. And then during that same speech, the president also called the nuclear deal with Iran a mistake. The Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions the United States has ever entered into. Frankly, that deal is an embarrassment to the United States, and I don't think you've heard the last of it, believe me. And here to discuss these developments and help us get a better understanding of these very complicated relationships is Dr. Robert Hazan, the chair of the Political Science Department at Metropolitan State University. Thank you so much for being here to help explain this to all of us. First, what do you make of the president's speech? I think President Trump definitely expressed a perhaps new vision, uh, a vision where peace, prosperity, sovereignty, and security at this juncture can only be achieved through militarization and perhaps a more uh, active involvement on the part of the United States. Um, diplomacy is being viewed as perhaps a, a tool that has not worked and that we may uh, really confront our enemies rather th than try to negotiate with them. So his choice of words uh, I'm, uh, you're right. We've, we've relied on diplomacy for so long, and so many people say that is the first best option. But the words he chose, they were pretty harsh. Yeah, I, I think that this administration does not have faith uh, on diplomacy. That's coming out very clearly uh, compared to previous administrations uh, that really looked at diplomacy as the main tool to negotiate uh, and, and to get out of it. Uh, eventual uh, warlike situation. But in this particular case, especially in regards to North Korea, I think um, there are some uh, evidential, uh, evidentiary documentation, as it were, uh, that North Korea is very close to developing the hydrogen bomb. But there are also assertions that they have already developed a miniature version of it and they can launch it with ballistic missiles. So there is a lot of information that is coming out that really triggered the speech at the General Assembly of the United Nations. But I think that President Trump campaigned also asserting that, you know, there are serious problems on the part of his, you know, uh, supporters and also himself uh, with the United Nations, with its ability to resolve conflict. So this is perhaps a juncture where this administration views United States' role as essential in uh, resolving conflicts with North Korea, Iran, and various other, you know, potential enemies. So the words he chose... And, and the, the war of words that we see now exchanging between these two leaders, do you feel like President Trump's words were smart, strategic, not, I mean, risky, well, dangerous? Well, I think President Trump really is there to express his, you know, strong uh, disdain for North Korea. I think he, he wanted to articulate that. Now, are these diplomatic words? I don't think so. I don't think that, you know, world leaders should address one another in ways especially at the General Assembly of the United Nations, where it may undermine the potential for diplomacy. Uh, this current, actually, war of words, as it were, really sets the tone for a far more aggressive uh, nature in, in, in uh, deliberations. That doesn't mean that, you know, we're, we are going to right. go to war. Right. But I think that it really perhaps sets the tone for North Korea that, um, you know, they should watch for United States. Let's switch to the Iran nuclear deal for yes. a moment. Iran agreed to limit its nuclear program and in return economic sanctions would be eased. Uh, the president called that the worst deal ever negotiated. Is yes. that true? 
Uh, well, he campaigned on it, mm -hmm. and and then he articulated it with great clarity at the you know general assembly. I think uh, this this deal was a good deal. I think that this deal can open up diplomatic relations. Uh, this deal was in no way ambitious in the sense that it would prevent conflicts that you know we are experiencing, unfortunately, tragically in places like Yemen, in places like Syria. And uh, also, you know, uh, President Trump directly pointed to Hezbollah. But then Hezbollah is uh, working with the Lebanese government currently in ways that perhaps reflect a political anomaly. But, you know, Lebanon has been an uneasy, stable state. Uh, especially protecting itself, mm -hmm. you know, fairly well from the, you know, horrors that are occurring, you know, uh, in Syria. Around just, it, yes. Just next to it. And um, so I think that uh, this is a tone that perhaps also shows frustration and is a reflection of a distrust on the previous deals that were negotiated, not only with Iran, but also with, you know, other, other, other deals. But in particular, as we heard it, uh, President Trump many times has called this deal as the worst possible deal and embarrassing for the United States. And uh, with, with less than 30 seconds left, where do you see, where do you see things going? How, do you, how are people responding to this? I, I think people are, people are uh, responding by many questions rather than answers, and time will show where this will go. I think that there are still uh, peace efforts, diplomatic efforts that have the potential to work. And we all hope that it does, that they do work, and that, you know, a deal with Iran would, would strengthen itself rather than weaken relationships between United States and Iran. And hopefully uh, the stalemate that really looks like not a good one at this point where diplomacy may not work. Hopefully diplomacy works with North Korea as well. Well, we certainly, I think, are all paying attention right now to see what, what proceeds from here. Dr. Hazan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for Appreciate inviting Appreciate your time. Thank you. We'll be right back.